Hey, God, Jerry here. Welcome to the video. Welcome to this slide video. And today we're going to talk about a question that I get asked all the time. And honestly, uh, it does pretend to myself as well. And this is one of the biggest struggles or frustration that I had uh, when I did had when I had level of uh, pre-diabetes or, or blood sugar, almost uh, type two uh, level of diabetes. Uh, which sometimes I'll say still show up right now, mostly are, is, are in normal ranges. But why do I wake up sometimes uh, with very high blood sugar? Uh, and, and of course, what to do about it, all right? Because most of you uh, wake up with high blood sugar. Uh, you get very frustrated because you know that you ate pre relatively well. Uh, and you also know that you not only eating well, but you also have a lifestyle. And still, uh, you don't, you do not know why your body is acting up uh, on that sense. But uh, today, you will understand, you will learn why this is happening, which is not food related. Uh, even if doctors uh, and physicians are still uh, telling you that most time it is, it is food related, it is lifestyle related, obviously it's hormonally related. And today, you're not only going to learn what those things are, because there is a few phenomenon. Uh, and you are also going to learn specifically what to do about it, okay? Because some of you that has been uh, type two diabetes or even type one, uh, especially for one of these two, to, to um, one of these two uh, specific topic, know exactly what this thing what, it, what this thing is. But rather than really uh, you use critical thinking and, and know what to do uh, for this point, you know they just go ahead and whether they they are suggested from the doctor or whether they think on themselves, they take in medicine, they take in uh, insulin to, to try to fix a problem. And honestly, there is this idea that uh, somehow, unless you take in medications, you are not, you are not uh, able to reverse some, some sort of phenomenon or some sort of genetic or physiology that happens inside your life. Now, um, you know, unless of you get, rather than you getting frustrated and, and not knowing what to do, uh, today, you, you, you're you going to learn a few little tips that really can make a huge difference. Not today, not tomorrow, but in a month from now, in six months from now, is you keep doing uh, the things that you know you should be doing, you would see a huge difference in your blood sugar. This is the biggest problem I see in uh, diabetes, in, in insulin resistant. It is people thinking that wh whether they take in medicine or whether they take in supplements or whether they doing uh, active lifestyle or whether they start working out, which they never did before, whether they are eating a certain way, their blood sugar should change tomorrow if you start today, right? This is the biggest mistake that I see. Your blood sugar is I see, it is a sign to a bigger, sin, bigger symptoms, which is insulin resistant, which is not the root cause. The root cause is uh, most of you, most people in activity, uh, body composition, and weight, excess weight, okay? There is some sort of genetical component, but it's not nearly as impactful as people think. Now, why do you wake up in, uh, in, in with higher than normal blood sugar? Why do you, sometimes you do night shift or something of that nature, you don't have like a regular job, you wake up even later in the, in the morning or, or later in the day, you have these uh, peaks of sugar going up more than normal, which is spikes, which most of you should not even be worried about it unless you have a debilitating symptom. In other words, if your blood spikes, drops your pressure, uh, if it creates uh, frequent urination, like frequently really like debilitating, uh, if you feel like sick or vomiting or, or something of that nature, you then should probably do something about it, uh, stabilizing the symptoms, almost saying like we're putting a bandaid on the symptoms so we can live normally. But if you live normally, if you have no problem, uh, stop watching the, the spikes, rather try to fix, stop watching the small picture, see the big picture. The big picture is that you need to, to do, to get more active. You need to get, uh, you know, work out probably a few times a week, exercise, do some activity, and also change most of your meals, okay? But why do you eat well, or you don't eat carbs, or you do not eat sugar, um, and then you still get this phenomenon? Given the fact that what I'm going to tell you right now is not nutritionally related, understand that even by eating protein, um, like it's, it's the second biggest micronutrient that spikes after carbs. 
So by eating proteins, some sort of dairy, which usually is there is a mix of amino acids and some sort of carbs together, it would spike even more. Uh, whey protein does have a huge significant spike as well. So like you just want to understand that there is more than just um, you know just than what you're watching, right? Like just that um, nutrition, okay? And sorry, just the, just carb. Like there are other things that spike insulin too. But one more time, you are not. Uh, having this for the, for the protein or for the nutrition, you're having this because of this thing that I that I found here, which is uh, which is actually pretty good. It's an article or, or, or a link that you can you can go and look for. It's myhealthalberta.com. It's Canadian, I guess. There is two phenomenon. Okay, I'm gonna read it with you. It is called down phenomenon or down effect. It's obviously a normal rise in blood sugar uh, as a person prefers to wake up. Okay, is you waking up? with a higher than normal spike is because your liver is producing a huge amount of sugar uh, into the bloodstream, okay? So there is three hormones that act together, growth hormone, cortisol, and uh, catecholamine, which is the adrenals. Uh, when these are not, when these, when these things are not balanced correctly, or like the, let's say your, your, your liver, uh, maybe a little bit of fatty liver or, or cause a little bit of a, a, an extra spikes, the, the, the person um, produce enough insulin uh, and obviously the, the blood sugar or, or can pro sorry, cannot produce enough insulin and the blood sugar will be spiked. Okay. So the inability for your liver to produce enough insulin, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a, a drawing here if, if this thing works. So the inability for you to be able to um, produce the insulin that you are looking for, uh, get your so like let's say your blood like, like the normal uh, curve is like that, right? Uh, then, of course, it goes down, right? And then you have a significant spike from, 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 from the glucose, right? So the curves are like that. There is always, in fact, there is always three hormones that are responsible, okay? So let's say a normal curve will be like that. Your, uh, you know, like you have your liver, you know, producing, like not producing enough. And then, like, of course, uh, as your liver should produce insulin, it doesn't produce enough insulin and then like the, the blood sugar is high anyway okay this is one and again it's produced probably by the it's actually produced by the same hormones okay so the hormonal shift or the hormonal axis is the issue okay the other thing is something relatively similar on the outcome but it's called the samadhi effect okay this happens mostly on the um on type diabetes type one okay so the the um the, the blood sugar um, goes like the blood sugar goes down too much and obviously you you do like the person takes in you know takes insulin do not eat regular uh, bedtime snack and the person sugar lab, lab, um, drops more than normal okay as the blood sugar drops more than normal there is a um there is a, a compensation now if you're type 1 diabetes probably you, you would you would need to take that's why a lot of people need to take the, the, the insulin and they say that the only way to fix it is the insulin. If you experience this when you're type two, or when you're not, or when, when you're pre, uh, you know, diabetic, like you basically experience this because there is uh, a compensation. Okay, so one one event is that you know your liver is not producing, is not working well, and and therefore is not producing enough insulin. The other one, there is not too much of a spa, uh, like uh, of too much of a uh, low blood sugar spikes so you like you you, you you do need more insulin this is why uh, whether you take in the pump if you have the pump then then is why you get more a spike or if you just you know probably compensate in, in different ways then you would see a spike now what, what what I want you to get from this is that not really getting frustrated and, and asking yourself uh, because this is where I see the problem the most I see people getting frustrated and they want to know what they have and only want to know oh, I have fatty liver or I have a problem or my liver is not working well or my hormones are not working well. Your body is working in such way because at this point, you develop a inability to process food and, uh, and the cells no longer process food well, meaning like you're insulin resistant, you no longer pro process carbohydrates well, you no longer process fat well, and therefore you became insulin resistant. Whether you became like that because you have mess, uh, like a damaged metabolism whether you became like that because you have some sort of genetic disposition, whether you became like that for whatever reason, you reached that point that you have insulin resistant and some of you diabetes. Therefore, 
you do not, you should not really worry about why this thing is happening. Just know that it's a fact. But the thing that you want to be learning the, how to do is really what to do with it. If you get data, if you're actually going to take the time to measure this thing, you might just well use the data, right? If you have a higher normal blood sugar, chances are you probably want to be uh, really focusing on um, doing something with it nutritionally, but also, um, you know, also the, the uh, also really like active wise, meaning like you want to become more active. Now, let's pretend you know that you have a not super functioning liver, which that would be the, the first of the two, which that would be the, um, the down phenomenon, right? Or the down effect uh, in which liver not, not, obviously not really working to the extent that it, that it should work, given the fact that maybe there are things that you can use to detoxify the liver, which is not my scope, which I'm not gonna talk about here, which I would not know nearly as much as be able to suggest anything. You probably would talk to your doctor. But you know that uh, obviously you find yourself very high level of sugar. It is not a good idea to give carbohydrates in the morning. It's also not a good idea probably to fast because if you fast, and again, you want to use the data, if I fast all day, uh, I get this blood sugar spike to be even higher because your body will, you know, you do need sugar, despite what people are telling you, you do need sugar to survive. You do need, like your brain needs sugar, your uh, cardiac um, tissue needs sugar, like you will, like maybe not the muscle, but you do need sugar to live. So your body will make sugar regardless. You will have gluconeogenesis, right? Like you would, which basically means making sugar from your tissues which is sucks as because that means that you're really eating off your muscle. And you will learn that if you, for insulin resistance, the best thing is to have muscle, not, not have muscle, not lose muscle. So you will need to keep as much muscle as you can. Okay. So what you want to be doing uh, when you have this data, probably start your breakfast with higher fat and higher uh, protein, right? Something like that, some, something of that mixture. You want to be introducing some sort of starches or some sort of fruit or some sort of vegetable later on in the day. And you do want to really find a way to reintroduce your carb as you pair that with activity. Much like if you work out, you are more sensitive to insulin after working out the, the first couple of minutes after up to, uh, up to maybe like a few hours. You want to be introducing most of your carb when you are eating after you eat after you're working out okay given the fact that you're using weights for example so using data after you take in the data is the best like this is really about stop looking for diagnosis stop looking to know what you have been petrified about or, or really stop from from your own scareness or fear and do something with the data like every day you can improve something with your data so like you do need really uh, stop looking for what you have. Instead, use the data you have. Okay. Now, given the fact that you are that you know that you that you have the say instead the smoggy effect, that means that you are uh, your your body compensates in a way that your blood sugar that goes down. Maybe you took a reading one day and, and you woke up initially 5 a.m. super blood low blood sugar, and then like you know that this is how it compensates. Given the fact that you know that, the best way probably to do that like if you especially if you're taking insulin uh you know waking up maybe and go for a walk okay go for a walk maybe 20 30 minutes you see how your blood sugar behaves if it goes down right away chances are you you know that you can control and again what like you're probably gonna ask okay which one of the two i have like doesn't really matter no it's like you know how your body is behaving you really need to start having this idea of becoming a detective of your body and saying, okay, whether or not I'm insulin resistant type to David, like you want to be using the data and making choices. This is why uh, you cannot go one size fits all. This is why keto will not work for everybody. This is why vegan will not work for everybody. This is why you do most of the time to realize you need help from people, from, from professionals. So you do, you just need to get the right professional, but you do need somebody to coach you through the journey because like, if you do not know this, it's a problem. If you know this and if you do not do it because you're not certain, it's also a problem. Okay, so you just really need to get you to a point that you understand why this is happening, but you also know you do not, you do need to do something about it. Okay, so uh, 
walking could be one one thing if if that works good if it's not working there is some sort of root cause that needs to happen if i wake up and, and i fast and i have a higher than normal blood sugar more than if i would eat carbohydrate uh, and i go to walk and it's not really improving like like it would happen to me it is because there is an underlying cause my cause is for example that i have uh, at times and in i had in the past higher than normal ferritin that in that get somehow to really uh, impact the, the that, like it goes into the to the liver it creates problems and that really will not change the the the, the blood sugar for me it would not like i need to adopt a different strategy okay uh, another example is that people work out and then they get a very high spike of like this is pretty normal after you work out your body will make sugar okay and they think uh, why am I working out? And instead of going down, it goes up. Okay, there is a curve there too. But like, what do you need to do? You also need to understand that by uh, I spike, it doesn't mean that you'll not lose. If you have a very stable spike. It also will not mean that you're not gaining weight. It's, it's, it's not mutually related. Like you do need to understand that first and foremost, we need to stop watching the acute. We need to stop watching numbers unless they're creating a debilitating in symptom unless you're getting to getting sick after waking up super high uh, that would be a problem right but if you do not get that you know that there is some sort of co compensation inside your body happening right now it will not change even if you change everything you're doing by tomorrow it would not change like it needs to be done in a different way the numbers are a sign to a symptom which is internet resistant which is a root cause the root cause is weight most of the time uh sedentarity bad environment like you need to change those things and over six months time you would see a result okay you will see the wins before you would see weight going down you would see circumference getting better this is why if you are watching this chances are you want to be going up in the features and check my video about insulin resistance about what really are the metrics you need to look for which is basically improving your body composition which is done by taking measurements pictures lowering weight uh, and those and you want to be stopping to looking for the signs like those those um the, like those numbers that are that doesn't make sense but if you're encountering this phenomenon we're talking about today first thing you want to do is use the data to do something with the data use the data i'm getting this number i go to walk they are lowering okay i know this is the pattern okay you can do that not all the time a few times a week right uh one time you wake up same problem you eat a higher than normal, like you eat, let's say you eat a specific meal, like you eat, uh, like say protein shake or, or like Greek yogurt with some nuts, right? I mean, protein and fat. What happens after? Like it happens, okay, cool. After one, like instead of spiking early, maybe it's a smilder spike. Okay, this is the pattern, right? You take it one time after 20 minutes, after two hours, this is the pattern. Okay, you take a piece of paper, down okay this i know that in the morning i can have greek yogurt with nuts like you like you you are have to become a detective nobody can tell you what to do certainly not going inside a group uh like full of many many people and asking what worked for them it's not going to be the same thing as working for you but speci especially not even like not even uh and and and, and some of you are not going to like what i'm saying not even doctors not even nutritionists not not even like uh, they're going to know what working for you like you do need to adopt an approach that is proactive meaning like i'm doing something i'm not don't feel like i'm doing a mistake i'm going to see what happens and then we're going to optimize any people you are going to work in the future that is going to help you has to be something of that nature doing something getting some data doing something better or different and improving and obviously getting to track what works okay and with this, uh, it should be enough to get you uh, to understand what, what this phenomenon are, why this is happening, not for nutrition, and also what to do about it, okay? If you want to discuss about your specific case, comment down below, game plan, which basically is going to be uh, like a call. We're going to jump into a call, and we're going to highlight and analyze your particular case, which one of these two phenomena really are, and, and what to do about it, okay? You're going to walk away with a plan. Uh, with an idea of what you have to do more about what's your genetic like and why these things are happening so this is called here i'm going to talk to you soon and i wish you an amazing day